Blinka, 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 blinka. It is time for some Python on hardware. Uh, first up, so PyCon is coming up. It's May 1st to 9th. It's by the community, for the community. And if you're interested in either teaching or being mentored, there's a lot of different ways that you can help, and there's a lot of different ways to participate. So this would be on May 4th, 2019, just coming up, 2.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Um, there's still time. Today is the 13th. Tomorrow's the 14th. But if you want to be a participant, you can sign up. Put the links in the chat. It's also on the blog. And if you want to be a mentor and um, help, and the, the goal of this is to pair up experienced open source maintainers with a diverse group of new contributors. So if you ever wonder how you could possibly get people to contribute to open source, they're going to match up people who do the uh, maintenance and run an open source project with people who haven't before. Um, Scott will be doing one, and uh, you could probably guess what he's going to be doing. I wonder what it's going to be about. Yep, it's going to be CircuitPython. Oh, so, right. Issue tracker, repo, contributing code, mentor Scott Chalkroff, project areas, education, tooling. So that'll be, um, that's one of the coolest things. About, PyCon has a lot of stuff going on, um, but that's one of the coolest things. So mentored sprints. Also, that's a good idea for other conferences if, um, if you're interested, because the only way open source gets better is if we get more people doing it. Another so, thing is, you know, if you really want to see a project that has a really strong base, like it isn't kind of half hazard. I mean, the CircuitPython yeah. uh, repo is very well structured and the issues are very well structured. So this is a good way to see like, how does a project that have up to 20 or 30 contributors in a week, um, you know, all hardware based, how do they yeah. do it? So a lot of good success stories to be shared as well and best practices. Okay, other things that's going on at PyCon. Uh, DigiKey and Adafruit are teaming up to do something um, really important, and this is kind of the biggest thing we've, we've never been, done before. We've, we've been able to do, and special thanks to DigiKey. Every single attendee, and this is like thousands of people, will get a special edition Adafruit Circuit Playground Express DigiKey PyCon edition. Um, there will be workshops and more. Dan, Katney, and Scott will be there. So that is PyCon. So if you ha if you're not sure if you're going to go. This is a good reason to go, and that's coming up in May. Hard to argue. All right, uh, IoT Design Week is happening right now, and then on, uh, it was, let's see, Tuesday, there was a special event. Bob Martin showed, uh, and he's the Wizard of Make from uh, Microship, people formerly known as Atmel, showed a bunch of weather stations and gave away five Pi Portals. Those are in the mail. We sent those out today. So if you want to check the replay, you can check our site. You can also um, thank uh, DigiKey and then also Microchip for the, the both of those companies are part of it. So cool, Yay. cool event, and uh, it's good to see Microchip doing live streaming. So keep it up. Okay, uh, next up, we have a new site, <gasps> CircuitPython.org. Dude, yeah. So like, I got home on Friday night, and Sky's just like, "Hey, I'm back, and uh, let's do the site." And I'm like, "It's okay, fine." And so uh, we set up the DNS, and he just went like all out and uh, started structuring up the circuitpython.org site. We've been working on it on and off, but just getting it all out there. And we've had all, everyone from the community contribute photos, descriptions, text yep. links, and it came together real fast. If so. you want to help out and you're just like, well, I don't really work on the core or I don't, I don't know what things I want to do, you can help out with the website. There's plenty of things for all of us to do. Um, please go to circuitpython.org, and then you can also check out our GitHub repo, if do any pull requests. We're putting all the boards in there. If you want your board in there, you have to just make sure it's in the repo, and then it'll show up. That's right. We are only doing, yes, if you have yeah. a, a board that it runs, it's say MD21 or 51 or 2840, and you want us to do builds and have the downloads available, it has to be part of the repo. It can't, it's, if it's in a fork, we're not going to be able to grab it because we auto generate. Um, direct from the repository. So a really good excuse to get your stuff into mainline, check okay. Python. I wanted to talk about a fun Code Plus community story. So okay. I put this in the newsletter this week, um, but this was, a, this was a neat story for lots of reasons. One, I like how GitHub is starting to do some things. So when you join GitHub, you can look to the side there. It has a little rocket that says, join GitHub. And then when you do your first um, issue, it'll have a little satellite, and then you do your first full pull request as a little tugboat, and it, and it tugs okay, a little bit. Yeah, this is neat. It, well, I feel like they had a theme there, and then they kind of like... No, this, this all works. No, there's a rocket, and then you're in space, but yeah. then now you're in a ship? Yeah, because you have to do a pull request. But there, uh, why don't you it like a because, space... Because I think in space, you don't really have to pull as much, but in, like in the water, yeah. it's a tugboat. Like, 
you know, whatever. Okay. It, I, I, I thought it was neat. It's, no, I think it's adorable. I'm so, just wondering with the thematic thing here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so the, the, the cool thing about this is someone, um, his name is Corey, and said, uh, hey, I've been, I've been coding since 1982, um, but I'm new to Python and GitHub, but there's this MIDI thing that I want to let you all know about. So Corey posted up, uh, join GitHub, open up an issue, and the team has all these resources for doing issues and doing stuff with our CircuitPython uh, repo. Yeah. And uh, Corey was able to do that and uh, did a pull request. It got merged in. And so for the folks out there that are doing open source, you, in addition to being like, oh, here's our open source repo, you have to have reasons for people to do things. And MIDI is one of them. That's a, that's a community of a lot of people who do music. And you have to give them ideas and things that would want them to jump into something like Python or CircuitPython or even GitHub. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a neat story. So that's in a newsletter. And I think this is just like a, like a mini case study of like, if you're successful, you'll see more and more of this. Like, hey, like I used to code a lot and now I want to do this. And I'm hoping, and I wish there was more metrics we could see. I'm guessing that there's more people that this might be their first time joining GitHub or opening up issues or pull requests. Even though Circuit Python is becoming large, we yeah. just have I think we have the most beginners because it's made for beginners. Yeah. So I think that's a, that would be a neat metric. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to to get it. So I'm I'm looking out for stories like this. Yeah. So anyways, I thought that was cool. That was cool. Okay. Um, next up, uh, we are continuing to do high portal projects, and this is one that I made because I I thought well if there's Mogwise, I want to prove that I'll be able to take care of them. So this is the screenshots from the gremlins clock that I made. And the way it works is you need to know if feed them before midnight and then not feed them after chicken, midnight. Chicken, in particular they eat chicken. KFC. Yeah, they eat chicken. Um, and then don't get them when they no bright light. So here's here's how the clock works. It also lets you know when it's okay to feed them again. So here here's my clock. So we'll see how this works out, um, but just like Mr. Wing, or grandfather, would say, you do with Mogwai what your society has done with all of nature's gifts. You do not understand, you are not ready. So hopefully I've proven I'm ready for a pet Mogwai. Okay, uh, next up. This is a cool 3D printed case. These are some community projects. And this, this is for the Pi Portal, and it's yep. like, you know, we have this little button demo, so you have a wedge case that you can uh, Yep, that's from AT buttons. Makers. And then um, this is from Mystery Science Theater 3000, one of the robots is called Gypsy, and they're moving Gypsy to uh, Cricket, that we were using Arduino before that. This is Redbot. There's an entire video and story behind this. Um, Nick posted up. It's, it's a uh, T-Tin. It's a T-Tin robot using Circuit Playground Express and Circuit Python, and you can read the story about it. Um, this is from a learn guide, and we'll have a little bit more about this later in the show, but this is a full um, demo system. That it's a everything you. for it's the everything. robotics. Yeah. You want to show everything possible. This is your project. Yeah. It's Circuit Python. And this is how to use um, CircuitPython and some of our boards to have this Logitech. Um, it's a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro USB joystick. 
and it takes input from the joystick, outputs JSON, and then uses the Trinket MZO UART transmit pin, and then it um, works. That's kind of cool. Um, this is neat. This is um, one of those little minifig, uh, mini SAMs that run CircuitPython, and this will uh, help hack your computer. So it puts in all those keystrokes. Yeah. That's cool. I get a Drezzle unicorn. Yeah. Uh, Matt sent over some of the links and more from the Melbourne MicroPython meetup. Uh, one of the things, um, this is cool, it's a good video. This is Damien's uh, native modules in MicroPython. Yeah, this is interesting. It's like a high, how to do high speed uh, code elements in MicroPython. So I'm interested in this. Yeah. There's a PyBoard D series update, um, should be shipping soon. Uh, this was in the MicroPython newsletter, and we also posted. It's got these cute pluggy in parts. Look yeah. at these cute connectors, like Hiroshi connectors. Yeah, we posted about this, and we also put it in our newsletter. So this board will be out. We're looking forward to playing around with it. I think it's an M7. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, this article is from Hackaday. This is just some fun stuff. You can make these types of XK, uh, CD charts with Python. So this uh, tutorial shows you how. We also had um, these stats that we keep an eye on. So over, uh, this was Stack Overflow, and I think they got a few other sources, but the, this is a Stack Overflow chart. Python overtakes JavaScript as the most questioned language. So in other words, people are, are using it quite a bit. Yeah, they're learning where they're taking it in school. You can see there was yeah. a, a peak, and then actually drop. These are each, either means that JavaScript has gotten easier for people, or fewer people are starting out with yeah, it. Yeah, I think with machine learning and a lot of other things, like yeah. TensorFlow, people are starting out with Python data visualization. Um, we have a new language that we got to add to <laughs> Circuit Python. Pirate. 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 Yeah. Pirate um, with a Y. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So if you want to help contribute regular human languages in, in addition to pirate languages, uh, you could do that. And uh, we have all this on Awesome Circuit Python. This is from Adafruit Daily. You go there, adafruitdaily.com, sign up for Python on microcontrollers. Um, it's in our weekly recap video. Yeah. All of this is in our um, podcast that we have. We have our weekly Circuit Python meeting on Discord. And then, of course, check out circuitpython.org. So lots of stuff in Python on hardware this week. It's. Blinka, blinka, blinka. Should I have a blinka song? Blinka blinka, blinka blinka, blinka blinka, blinka blinka, blinka blinka, blinka blinka. Okay.